Squish by Vinnie Smith. Exterior trawler deck day. On deck are four pretty people and one fat guy, all in their 20s. Loud techno music overwhelms the calm Caribbean water. The pretty people are paired up and overly oiled up. The pasty white Long Islanders take full advantage of the bright Caribbean sun. Bobby, a buffed out shirtless New York Guido type with an obnoxious gothic cross tattoo covering most of his back, dances oh so dirty with Stephanie, a voluptuous blonde stunner nearly oozing out of her bikini. Nick, same as Bobby, but with one full sleeve of tattoos, dances not so close with Gina, a bottle red-headed beauty with dark roots and a bikini that barely exists. Nick reaches over to Stephanie, who's next to him, pulls at the back of her bottoms and cranes his neck to take a peek. Stephanie slaps his hand away and keeps dancing. Bobby shakes his head and laughs. It's routine. Gina, however, is not amused. She shoves him in the chest. What? The fat guy, appropriately named Tubby, sits alone in a deck chair reading the ingredients on the back of a bottle of bronzer. He seems oblivious to the couples and their antics. The music suddenly stops and causes everyone to turn and look to find out why. The reason glares at them from the cabin door. It's a whole lot of serious packed into a little brunette package. Real fucking little. Mid-twenties. April is a three-foot-tall dwarf. I thought I fucking told you to keep it down. Is this how it's going to be with you dumb motherfuckers? Hell yeah, that's how it's going to be. We're on vacation. Wrong. You fuck-ups are here because without this extra credit, you don't graduate. <laughs> that's a short stack of hard ass right there. Tubby seems irritated. He sets the bottle down on the deck next to his chair. You're not the boss of us, April. Keep on telling yourselves that. I'm the TA for this class, and I'll be grading the work on this trip. Frankly, I don't give a pile of monkey fuck whether you make it or not. So keep lipping off and see where that gets you. Stephanie, who's not listening, spots a pod of dolphins. Oh look, dolphins! Oh good, Stephanie found the fucking dolphins! You know we came down here to study the fucking jellyfish, right? I know, I just love dolphins is all. April rolls her eyes. Actually, they are porpoises. You guys... No, how you can tell? Gives a fuck. Shut up, Tubby. You shut up. A level above the deck, Michael steps out of the wheelhouse. Damn, that's a good-looking black man in his 40s. His state, of U his state University of New York at Stony Brook t-shirt clings to his pecs. Yeah, he definitely works out. He talks as he descends the steps. Okay, okay, that's enough. Listen up. We are done here for one reason and one reason only. To study the effects of jellyfish, overpopulation, on the fragile ecosystem of this particular island. Nick looks at Bobby and makes a jerk-off gesture with his fist. Bobby smirks. Do not embarrass me, people. The island is managed by an old friend of mine, so I expect you to be on your best behaviors at all times and treat Mr. Lugo and the island with the utmost respect. The boat's engines shut down. There's still at least a thousand yards from the dock. Howard, 60s, a grizzled, seen-it-all seaman with faded green navy tattoos on his arms, steps out of the wheelhouse. He wears a wrinkled baseball cap that says Captain, reassuring everyone that he is indeed the captain. He may be old and crusty, but he'll still whip your ass. All right. This is as far as the reef lets this boat go. Gina raises her hand in the air. Captain Howard, sir, I have a question. He stares down at her. Do you know the bathroom smells like gas? I almost threw up after the fumes. Wouldn't want anything to compromise that sweet stench of your turds now, would we, my dear? Wow, nice attitude. Howard feels a little bad and lightens up. Gas tank. Leaking into the sewage tank. And it's just one more thing on the, my list of shit to fix on this tub. It's too late. He pissed her off. Gina puts up her hand, indicating that is what he should talk to. Whatever. Okay, then. Let's get the dinghies loaded. My dinghy's always loaded. Ha! Haven't heard that one before, son. Now, when you have a moment, maybe you can take that junk. Howard points at Nick's crotch. And load it into the two little boats with that junk. He points at the pile of equipment and luggage near the rear of the boat. Nick rolls his eyes. Vacation's over. Exterior dock, day. Jam-packed dinghies approach a beat-down wooden dock. Sophia, 40-something beauty with a smoldering Mediterranean look, stands on the dock, watching and waiting. As she bends over to pull in a dinghy, a tiny black thong peeks out from the top of her khaki shorts. Sophia catches sight of Bobby and Nick not exactly being shy about trying to cop a look. She smiles ever so slightly. She secures the dinghy and stands up to greet the guests. Michael is first off and greets her with a hug. How are you, Doctor? Doing great, Professor. It's really good to see you. Everyone, this is Dr. Sophia Lugo. 
head researcher and caretaker here on the island. Please, just call me Sophia. April struggles to get out of the dinghy to the dock. Sophia extends her hand to April. Here, let me help you. April waves her off. I got it. It's okay, let me help. I said, I got it. Michael cringes and shakes his head to Sophia, indicating she should let go. April gets to the dock and then to her feet. This is my assistant, April. So great to meet you, April. Sophia extends her hand. April doesn't shake it. I guess. Sophia's taken aback for a beat, but quickly moves on. Stephanie and Gina prepare to step out of the dinghy, but are rudely pushed aside by Nick and Bobby, who can't scramble out fast enough to meet the hot cougar. This is Jerk On and Jerk Off. Don't listen to her. I'm Nick and he's Bobby. Welcome. The pleasure is all ours. April rolls her eyes and points back to the dinghy where Howard is helping Gina and Stephanie onto the dock. And those two are insignificant and useless. April. I mean Gina and Stephanie. Tubby sucks in his massive gut and puffs out his chest as if his girth is the product of a lifetime of weight training rather than burgers and pizza. And that's Toby. Tubby struggles to pull himself onto the dock. As he is about to stand, he slips and falls flat on his face right at Sophia's feet. Laughter from everyone but April and Sophia. Sophia kneels down to check on him. Damn me, are you okay? Tubby tries to play cool. Oh, oh yeah, I'm good. Call me Tubby, everyone does. No, that's so mean. Oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm one who came up with that name. Sophia looks at Michael, who nods his approval. Okay. Tubby struggles to his feet and resumes a puffed up, tough guy stance. <sighs> Welcome to Ophidian Key. How about we take a ride and see what you came all this way for? Sophia turns and walks toward the jeep. Nick thrusts his pelvis as though he's nailing Sophia from behind. Bobby laughs. Gina smacks them both upside their heads. Assholes. Exterior dirt road day. Two old military style jeeps pulling small trailers filled with equipment and baggage cruise along a dirt road. There's a thick jungle on one side and sandy beach on the other. Just beyond the sand is the most inviting turquoise water. Sophia drives the lead jeep with April, Michael, and Tubby, while Howard and the others follow in the second one. Exterior beach day. The jeeps drive onto the beach. Everyone hops out and looks around in disbelief. Holy shit! Littering the beach are thousands of jellyfish. Damn! Look at all those squishy fuckers. He pokes at one with his finger. I wouldn't touch that until we know what we are dealing with. Plus, dead jellyfish may still have live nematocysts that can release toxin. They also sting like a bitch, idiot. Nick jerks his hand back. Michael opens an equipment case and puts on some latex gloves. He pulls a pocket knife from his belt. He kneels down and uses the knife to flip over a nice, fat jellyfish. He examines its underside. Nick is curious as to what else is in the case. He starts to pick through it. It's certainly strange. When did this happen? They've always washed up here, but usually just a couple hundred annually. A few months ago, though, they started washing up by the thousands. Michael turns back to the equipment case and sees Nick screwing around with the contents. You want to hand me one of those plastic containers there, Chief? Nick does. Michael slides the pocket knife under the jellyfish carcass and slowly lifts it into the container. He then uses the knife to help load the tentacles in as well. They are rather large specimens. I've never seen a Chrysora, Quincyquera, this big. Christ. A what? Stinging nettles, dumb fuck. Nick sneers at her and pulls a mask and snorkels out of the case. Huh? Jellyfish, for fuck's sake. We'll run some tests and see what we can find. Yeah, you do that, dude. Nick puts on the mask. Meantime, I'm going for a dip. Hold on, you might want to rethink that. Why? Fuck it. Go on, jump on in. Sophia glares at her. If you think there are a lot of jellyfish on the beach, that's nothing compared to what's actually in the water. Literally hundreds of thousands of them. So what? We came all the way down here and we can't go in the water? Howard, leaning against his vehicle, shakes his head in amusement. If you do get time to swim, we have a lagoon with one of the most gorgeous waterfalls in this part of the world. There aren't any jellyfish in there and it's just to die for, trust me, you'll love it. You guys are here for the lab work. You will be spending most of your time dissecting the samples. Shit. Nick pulls the mask off and tosses it back into the case. 